and welcome back to my channel. This is my first sort of talking video of 2018 slash I'm pretty sure the first sort of talking video like this style on my channel. My best friend Loie and I used to do videos similar to this kind of monthly favorites, fall favorites and just fun stuff like that over on an old channel that we no longer run but I'll link it below because there's some really fun content on there if you want to check it out. But yeah the hope is that this year I get to do more talking videos and just kind of share with you guys. We've got tons of content ideas, but I would also love to hear from you anything that you'd want to see, so let me know. Today I am going to be doing a review of my plum paper planner, walking you through the planner I used this past year, so after a year's of a year of use, I can give a full review, and then also talk you guys through the planner that I ordered this year, the differences, kind of the changes that I made, etc, etc. It's got a oh. My husband's behind the camera. He just mentioned me in, in his Insta story. Uh, it was actually funny when I started to shoot this video, our friend Josh called. I think we probably have a clip of it. It was hilarious. But basically he asked about an event that he wanted to invite us to to see if we could go. And I was like, so funny you ask. I'm literally filming a planner video. Let me open it up and check my schedule. So yeah, we didn't pay to do that. It was just really funny. I'm gonna start with this year's Plum Paper Planner review and kind of talk you through Plum Paper, um, kind of my thoughts on the brand and how I used it for this year, then I'll talk you through this, or how I used it last year, then I'll talk you through this year's planner, and then I'm just going to share some quick tips and tricks that Jeff, my husband, and I use to just plan our weeks together, plan our years, just different things that we do. Now our system is constantly evolving, it's certainly not perfect, and everyone has systems that kind of work for them, but this was really highly requested over my Insta stories over the holidays, so I thought I would just share share it with you for those who are interested or for those who are just kind of planner obsessed. I feel like the planner craze has really gotten bigger and bigger each year. So uh, this is my planner from 2017. This is from plumpaper.com. Uh, Plum Paper Designs also has an Etsy shop so you can also order from the company there. I discovered them on Etsy. They're really similar to the Erin Condren Life Planners in size and in layout but I find them to be a lot more affordable than the Erin Condren. Now the Erin Condren Life Planners, for example, have a little bit of a firmer cover, and then you have the option of you know, the rose gold coils. Um, she has some really beautiful features of her planners, but I just find the price point to be a little high, and I find that the Plum Paper Planners have a lot more options in terms of customization, which I really have appreciated and enjoyed, especially with my planner that I designed for 2018, which I'll show you later. So I'm just going to talk through the planner, but then we're also going to shoot some inserts so you can kind of get a closer view of the pages. Now obviously this is a very large planner. Um, it's 8.5 by 11 roughly, and a lot of people don't want a planner this size to tote around, but for the most part this stays on my desk at my office and then on our desk here at home. When Jeff and I plan on Sunday afternoons, I have this open. It works for me. Now it's not something that you know can fit in a clutch or probably fit in an everyday bag if that's what you're looking for. But for me, it has all of the features that I really want in a planner. And so I don't mind the large size, but just wanted to note that. Um, she's got a ton of different cover options. You can do photos, you can do um, monograms. Um, I just had Allie Lowndes here at the bottom. Um, and you can pick, you know, your different color schemes. She's got a, a lot of really cool things, and even this year there were more added to the website. Um, so now I'm just going to kind of talk you through the inside of the planner. Um, so when you open it up, you've got your year to glance pages, of course, but then I love they have this um, special date section that breaks down into your January through December months. This is really beneficial. Jeff and I like to plan our year together sometime in January. Last year we went um, down to, where was it? La Jolla. La Jolla. <laughs> we went down to La Jolla for the day. Now I know some couples will kind of go away for the weekend to plan their year. Um, we went down to La Jolla and just kind of did a day trip and spent some time praying, spent some time talking through what we wanted our year to be focused on, kind of relationally, spiritually career-wise, and then we went through and plugged in all the dates of conferences, weddings, trips we knew we wanted to take, things that we were anticipating were going to happen. It just kind of helps us to look at our year ahead, know roughly 
for each season, you know, what we have going on, what we want to do if, you know, we want to plan something. For example, our wedding anniversary is in April, so we try to either do maybe like an overnight or a day trip around then. Um, we have summits for a church planting residency that we're currently a part of. We have, of course, friends getting married, you know, all those types of things. We try to plug in all the dates for the year. This is especially helpful, I find, just from a sanity point of kind of knowing what's ahead. That way when people are talking about summers, when they're talking about trips, you kind of have a general understanding of what's going on for your year. So you can say, yes, we'd love to go with you. Or yeah, we actually aren't doing anything for a couple months in the fall. We should try to fill it with a cool weekend trip to San Francisco or something. Uh, we live in Los Angeles, so we're trying to explore California more. And so kind of looking at the year ahead really helps with that. So I love that the planner features that. In addition to that, it has this ideas, plans, goals at a, view, at a glance, which I love because if you're into New Year's resolutions or you're into kind of setting different types of goals, this page allows you to do that in a really fun and colorful way where you can just put, you know, different categories. I had home life, finances, relational, and you can just kind of plug in things for the year. I think it's cool just to also have a place to do that. Then every single month you have your monthly highlights page and you can see that they have goal one, goal two, goal three, birthdays, events, things to remember. I plugged in our SOMA sending assignments. SOMA is our church family. I'll link information below for that if you're interested. And then also a big notes page, um, which is really good if you want to just jot down quick dates or, you know, maybe it's prayer requests or maybe it's just whatever it is. You have space for that. Then you have your monthly calendar view. The monthly calendar view is really nice. I depend on this so much to look at the month ahead. There's big squares, so you definitely have enough room to plug everything in. Um, also, the stickers that you see come with the planner. I'll get to that at the back, but those are really helpful to just kind of break, break it up, make it look fun, get you excited about things that are happening, but also just, yeah, it's easy to kind of track if it's not all just black pen. Um, and then you get to your weekly page. Now, this planner that I ordered for 2017 was the large morning, afternoon, evening planner, which basically gives you a square for the morning, the afternoon, the evening, and then some checklists at the bottom. This was really helpful, especially because there were some months that I um, had off of work in 2017 and so I was actually able to plan different things in the morning and the afternoon. Now if you kind of have your typical Monday through Friday 9 to 5, 9 to 7 job, obviously you know these may or may not be filled as much on a weekly basis but it's super helpful for planning things. You know maybe it's coffee with friends, maybe it's someone you're meeting or an appointment you have in the afternoon and then of course the evening is really crucial because Jeff and I are always trying to sync up our evening plans dinner together, dinner with friends, errands, things like that. And then at the end of the month, um, you have an additional, it, usually it ends with a notes page. What I did in my 2017 planner was add one extra notes page that I sort of used for sermon notes. And then I added an extra to-do list page. This was helpful. Sometimes there were people I wanted to get in contact with that month whether you wanted to track a fitness class that you went to that month. I think these can be really helpful for that. If we were going on a trip that month, you can see here San Diego that month, I had my packing list, prayer requests, things like that. So that's more or less the monthlies, which again, super helpful. Then what's cool about Plum Paper is in addition to, you know, your standard calendar month planning, you can also add different tabbed sections. So in 2017, I added three tab sections to my planner. Again, that's going to add stock, paper stock to the planner. So bear in mind, they do have page limits, but just know that your planner will be thicker um, because of the added pages. I added their My Home section. Now this is the My Home section for 2017. This year's My Home section is slightly different. They evolve each year, which I also enjoy. It starts with things to remember, unforgettable moments. I wish I'd used this more but I really think it was a fun way to just note down things that happened that were good, milestones, funny quotes, you know, you have a lot of these pages. There's also my bills. Now Jeff, for our family, more or less tracks bills and does the finance piece. He loves spreadsheets and he's 
very type A, so I'm very blessed that he likes to track that. So this was just kind of my own personal budget. I didn't end up really using it. You have monthly cleaning lists. As you can see, I had a comprehensive one here, got to February, stopped using it, but I liked the idea that if you were trying to be more regimented about that, you could track it that way. They had to-do lists here for different home projects. As you can see, I kind of started with planning my office out and different organizational things, didn't end up finishing it. I was gonna start some career goals here, but then I ended up just putting those in my new planner. Um, shopping list, this was cool just to track things we wanted to buy for the house. I also love the gift list. This was really cool. I could track birthdays, bridal showers. I also had Christmas gift planning I put down here, which was really fun. Monthly goals, which is again, nice if you're a goal setter, you can put them here and then password keeper. Of course, be careful with this if your planner's just sitting around or if it, God forbid, gets taken. Um, I didn't use that, but for those that need it. And then again, your monthly expense tracking, which I didn't use. What I loved about Plum Paper, and this was really the selling point for me, was the blog section. As you guys know, or if you're new to my channel, I have a blog, cityandgrace.com, in addition to this YouTube channel. And I was really looking for a planning system that would allow me to plan well for my blog with ideas, content, editorial calendar. And I loved that Plum Paper had this option. So you have your monthly overview which allows you to write down things that inspire you, little to-do lists, still haven't done business cards, gotta do that. Um, post ideas, this was kind of where I listed the posts. You can chuck in your schedule here. As you can see, I more or less stuck with this. The summer was a little bit slow, but it picked up. I really just loved being able to see it at a glance. It helped push me forward. I'm still catching up on content, but honestly, I felt like this helped me with accountability to know that I had content that I wanted to put up. It kept reminding me of it and I could just continue to try to check it off the list. You can track income and expenses here. Um, post ideas. This I love. I will be tearing this out and saving this um, for this next year. Um, really cool. Monthly blog tasks. I, I loved this because there were so many educational tools I wanted to um, be informed about and to, to go through, you know, Google AdWords, group forums, all these different things that I just want to um, Kind of dive into in this next year. The to-do list I also used to track not just post ideas but actual content I captured that I needed to edit and put on the YouTube channel as you can see videos or posts on the blog and then as I would do them I would highlight them. I've gone through so much more of this list this is exciting to look back at this but that's really helpful for you bloggers and then if you do a lot of advertising sponsored posts this will help giveaways Blog Annual Planner, I didn't end up using this a ton, but I feel like it is a really good option if you have been doing blogging for a while and are really gung-ho about kind of planning out each month, each quarter. I would like to do that more this year, but I had started a little bit last year, but I love again that this feature is available. And then I ended up adding a notes section. Now, for me, I used to have my planner and my kind of creative notebook where I put ideas down just for anything and everything. And I really wanted to have those work in concert in 2017. So I added that kind of creative note space to the back of the planner. I had our small group prayer requests. I had different planning pages for like women's ministry events. Um, I actually took a script writing course online. So I have all of my notes for that in there. Different seminars I went to, blog planning, Again, my seminar notes, like I just kind of wanted all of those things in one place, budgeting for the next year. I mean, there's tons of different things you can do. Again, another password keeper, my contacts, holiday list. These come standard with the planner in the back. And then, yay, stickers. Everyone's probably favorite part of planning. Now, I know that the Erin Condren and Etsy sticker store um, kind of universe has really blown up. I'm not a huge sticker person. I've gotten into it little things here and there. I don't do the full spreads, but I believe that the plum paper will work with a lot of the standard Erin Condren um, sticker spreads. Uh, but again, you get these cool strips. Um, obviously, I used a lot of these, as you can see, um, for different things. I also love these kind of just little, almost like mini washi tapes. You can use these for different events and different headers. Um, if I go to a month for example, I can show you, so at Christmas, Cleveland for Christmas, I was able to, you know, block these out as travel days. That was really fun. I really enjoyed being able to use those. And then what's nice too is at the back of the planner, 
you have um, a place for cards, um, stamps, you know, letters, whatever else you need can get stored back here. Photos, if you're a scrapbooker and you want to keep different kind of memorabilia back there, that's good for that. So this is my 2017 Plum Paper Planner. Um, I really enjoyed using this planner. I feel that it was probably one of the first planners I consistently used throughout a calendar year, meaning every single month I was putting things into it. I know a lot of times in January you're like, I'm going to plan this year, and then February, March, and then all of a sudden it's September, and you're like, I haven't even used that planner that I bought. But I really did use this one. I loved the design. It made me happy. Um, blush pink and um, floral uh, sort of just gave me joy to look at this planner. Um, probably sounds silly, but just knowing that I had this comprehensive book to help kind of guide me um, logistically through the year was really helpful. Um, and so I was definitely sold on the Plum Paper Planner design. Again, the morning, afternoon, evening was really helpful. Um, as you can see, there were some pages like the budget tracking I didn't really use, um, the password keepers I didn't really use, the, the home section I used a little bit. It was nice to have a space where I could put and jot down those things that kind of kept it all together with my planner, but at the end of the day I didn't really utilize a lot of those um, kind of guides that they put in there for cleaning and things like that. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys my 2018 Plum Paper Planner. I loved my planner from last year so much that I wanted to order it again. Now you can see this year it's a little bit thinner because I omitted some of those sections. I also went with just kind of a cool tone relaxing color scheme with the lavender leaf print and a simple uh, monogram. I really liked the look of that for this year. Now Jeff and I haven't done our yearly planning date yet. We actually just did something really quickly um, when we were at Starbucks one night, but I feel like we had a longer holiday break this year and we were able to talk through a lot of our goals for the year and a lot of our events. So we were able to do our yearly planning, not necessarily a day trip, but we just spent a few hours at Starbucks one night. Again, I highly suggest um, either you or you and your partner, or maybe you and your whole family, just take some time to look at every single month throughout the year. You know, maybe there's sporting events, you know, vac family vacations, weddings. It's just so nice to put, uh, put them down on a calendar. I can't say that enough. Um, so I'm just going to quickly walk you guys through. This one is very similar to last year, so I'm really just going to focus on the new features I ordered for this year. Um, this planner is the large ME planner for me, and you'll see why it's super customizable. So again, you have your at-a-glance pages, your special dates. Um, we're going to have some vacations this year, which we're excited about, ideas, plans, goals. I broke it into family and home, career and blog this year. You have your same monthly highlights page with your goals, events. I'm going to be using my notes page for a content planner for the month. Again, this will be a little bit more specific for the content going up on the blog, notes I want to take, outlines for videos, things like that. Monthly out of view page. Um, I'm going to utilize the monthly to-do list here because I did not add the to-do list at the back of the planner this year. Now this is my favorite part of the planner. You can see there's a lot of squares, there's a lot going on, so I'm actually going to start with a blank uh, week to show you what I did. So in the ME planner, you have super customizable sections here to the left. Now I think a lot of these are designed if you are a family and have multiple children, you can note down each of their different schedules. Um, maybe if you have a few different jobs, you could note that here. For, for me, um, I have a nine to seven job Monday through Friday, so I kind of felt like the morning and afternoon style planner was limiting because my mornings and afternoons generally look the same. But I really wanted to track different information this year. So at the top, I did devotional. This is where I'm gonna track and hold myself accountable for my devotional days. I added work because that is, of course, part of my day, and if there's an event going on at work, maybe it's a lunch I'm going to have with someone, maybe it's a shoot that I have, um, I'm just going to note that here. Then I have evening. Evening, of course, same as last year, will be our evening plans. This is super critical just because the evenings are kind of the only time we have to plan events and dinners, invite friends over, run errands and things like that often, so this becomes really critical. Now, if I were to draw a line here, that's kind of your standard morning, day, evening planner. Below that, I've added sections for um, my kind of outside of work work. 
that being my blog posts, my YouTube, my Instagrams, and then specifically a meals section. My blog posts, if anything I'm doing involves the blog, it'll get noted here. So maybe it's drafting a post, editing photos, and then the final post date. Some of these will be empty because I won't be working on the blog that day. Same with YouTube, editing, filming. If I'm going to post something, that will go in here. Instagram, this is also just trying to plan Instagram content to be more consistent with that. And then finally, meals where I'll check down our breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Also on the left, I noted that this was a to-do for the week, and then I added a little square here, and I called this square my prayer request for the week, because I thought that would be a nice little addition. Um, so far for January, I'll show you kind of what this looked like on a day, so it's not super overwhelming. I'm doing a She Reads Truth Roman study through the app, which is really helpful. The She Reads Truth app is a great way to plan your devotionals. I love the She Reads Truth app. It's my Bible, but it's also really good reading tools. So if you're looking for something to plan your Bible readings, I think a lot of people start out each year wanting to take in the Word each day. That's a lot of times, um, if you're a Christian, one of your resolutions. And so for me, having that devotional tab in the planner, also utilizing, like I said, the She Reads Truth app um, is really helpful because I could download, I think it was like $3 for a 45 or 55 Romans readings plan. And basically, you just open the app, you go to my plans, and then you can read each day a nice um, excerpt from the Bible, and then one of their authors will scribe kind of a response to it. It's really simple, gets your reading all scheduled for you. And then work, so I had that day off, call with my therapist, and then kind of a standard work day, nothing else there. Had my evening plans, home, date night, went to the gym, had a women's ministry planning night at my friend Robin's house. And then, of course, for the weekends, these become full Malibu wines for Sarah's birthday. Super fun. Blog posts, editing, all caps means the post, night off, editing, post. Same with YouTube, editing, all caps, what I'm putting up. Instagram, trying to just note down what I'm shooting. And then, as you can see, I didn't fully do the meals for that week, but um, I'm, I'm hopefully going to start utilizing that more. Jeff was traveling a little bit the last couple weeks, so we haven't utilized that per se. And then similar to last year, I have the blog section. Blog looks a little bit different in this year's planner. There's post ideas, goals, to do's, and final schedule. They also put income and blog stats on the monthly page this time. And then at the back, um, monthly tasks, which I think will be really helpful for planning content, scheduling shoots, updating Instagram hashtags, um, which are just the little preset ones I use, newsletter, coming soon. Um, again, blog post ideas, blog to-do list, um, all of your advertising and sponsor tracking. And then what I did this year instead of notes, I added a large to-do list section because I love to-do lists. I really feel like having your to-do lists all together, one, keeps you sane. Two, make sure you don't go crazy with the to-do list and have like a to-do list notebook, which can be really cute, but I love the idea that they were all in the planner. I started out with New Year's resolutions, which super great. I also have house to home plans, so I've got all our different rooms and the, I'm going to have the different things I want to do, print and frame photos. And then really, the world is my oyster. I can do packing lists for things, I can reference those. I'm going to do books I want to read, movies I want to watch. I'm really excited to kind of build this out. I know that um, they sell those like 52 lists for happiness books and there's tons of listography books, so I like to think of this section as my own listography page. And then again, in the back you have your stickers, which I really, really love, and I'm excited to use those again. I didn't order extra stickers, which I realized I did last year, but I think it'll be fine. I still have leftovers. And then again, you have your pocket. I also just wanted to walk through. Um, I do use some washi tape. Um, my mom got me this washi tape for Christmas in this cute holder. Um, I don't like to use it a ton during the week because I find, for me personally, it can be a little distracting, but I like to use them at the header of the month to just brighten that monthly page and kind of set a theme for the month color-wise, if you're into that and like think about those things like I do. And then for pens and tools, I have from Target a cosmetic case, but if you get these dual cases, I think that these can be really helpful because I can put all my pens here and then all my stickers um, and tools there. And I keep this with me at all times um, with my planner generally in my briefcase or at my desk. I'm trying to be good about color coding things, but for the most part, I just write in black. My favorite pens are the Pilot G2 pens. I really 
like those. I kind of fell in love with those at one of the studios that I worked at and so I need to buy more of those actually. So that is it. A very long and comprehensive review of my planner. Again, just to review some of the tips and tricks that Jeff and I use. Um, sorry if my hair is like getting crazy. I don't know what it looks like. But um, again, that yearly planning night we really highly recommend. And then just try to set aside time each week to go through and plan the week. Jeff is a digital guy. He can attest to the fact that he doesn't love that I use a paper planner sometimes because he'll want to plan something and he can't like check a Google calendar for me. He has to ask me or text me, which is fine. But I think, you know, if, if your spouse is someone who uses digital calendars, um, maybe you can kind of find a way to also put things there. But for the most part, we just keep the lines of communication open. And he'll just text me if he has a question about, can we do dinner with our friends Carl and Rachel on Wednesday? And then we can check, I'll check my planner and let him know if I'm free or what, or if I plan something. Um, Sunday afternoons is our time for that each week. That's also when we do grocery shopping. If you do meal prep or meal plan, that's the perfect time to plan your week out because you're planning your meals for the week already. So you're already taking time to look at your schedule. And so that's when Jeff and I just say, okay, you know, Tuesday night he might have his men's discipleship group. Um, Thursday nights is when I'm trying to go to the gym. We try to preserve Wednesdays for date night. We don't always go out, but we try to just intentionally spend that time together. And then we can also look ahead at the weekend and see what's going on. Um, yeah, having that time is really critical. Um, like I said, I also use the She Reads Truth app for planning my devotional readings. Now, I didn't keep sermon notes in my planner this year. I have a separate notebook for that. Um, there's a ton of different ones on Etsy. I'll also link the website I ordered my, my book from, which is really helpful. Um, I am starting to put my content into a Google Calendar just so I can see it digitally at a glance on the go. Um, so if you are a Google Calendar person, you know, there you do have the option, of, of course, to do both. Um, I think for Jeff and I, we're kind of figuring out what it looks like for me to put some of the maybe more important dates in Google so he can quickly reference it on his phone. Otherwise, it all just lives here in the planner, in the planner Bible of my life. Um, and then uh, I also try to be really intentional this year with planning dinners with friends at the beginning of the month. I love impromptu hangouts, but there's a lot of people in our life that we feel like we sort of lost touch with over the last couple of years just because we got busy and we didn't do a good job of planning. So standing events is my new favorite term because it's kind of how we're approaching hanging out with our friends more um, and being more social with people who maybe aren't, you know, at our workplace or at our church that we're not normally regularly seeing. So for example, our best friends, Loie and Joel, we are going to be planning a monthly dinner with them and right now we kind of have it on the third Thursday of the month. So again, if you are wanting to get together with friends more or a sibling or a family member more and trying to figure out how to do that, just pick a day like the first Monday of every month and have that be your dinner date. That way it's kind of built into the rhythm already. You're not having to text back and forth about it. Of course, if it needs to change, it can, but I just love the idea that we know that the third Thursday of the month we're going to have dinner with Loie and Joel. And so we're really excited about that. Um, that's a tip that I feel like I could have done <laughs> like years ago, but for whatever reason, it was always just like, yeah, let's get together and you keep texting, but you ultimately don't see each other because you can't get it together. So having a standing date is kind of my number one tip for the year. Just try to be more intentional with people in that way. And, uh, oh, I thought you were texting me. No. <laughs> um, yeah, those are my tips. I hope you find this video helpful. If you're on the fence about plum paper, go for it. They're amazing. They also have uh, hourly columns for the week, if that's super helpful. If you actually wanna use them for your workplace and plan appointments and schedules and meetings, you can do that. Um, they also have um, wedding planner option. They also have, I actually have the website open here. Um, they also have a teacher planner and they have a homeschool teacher planner. I'm sorry, they don't have a wedding planner yet, but I'm sure that that's in the works. I actually think there might be a, a wedding sections that you can add. Um, so they have the morning, afternoon, evening, they have hourly layout, they have just blank lined columns. There's tons of options on the website, so definitely check it out. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Nervous. My first video. Talking at you in a while. Start talking. I am texting my mom a photo to be like, play your video time. Oh, so cute. You get talking, talking, talking. I'm gonna post on Insta stories that I'm making this video. Gives you an overview of the year for each month. 
Oh, Josh Haynes is calling me. <laughs> Hold on. Hey Josh, Totes filming a YouTube video right now. Bro, I was about to text you a picture. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing a planner review, talking about how Jeff and I plan well for the year. Look at that live action review. <laughs> Jeff's behind the camera. Friend calls, wants to schedule something, have the planner here to check. Guys, that was not staged, I promise. Um, maybe it was. No, I'm just